So I'm here today with Sarah Jane Crawford. Woo! And last time you was on, you was yeah. talking to me about your new app, which is called Viappy. Yes. What's been happening since then? Listen, since I saw you, uh, which was a few months ago now, yeah. all of the restaurants from the entire UK, vegetarian and vegan restaurants are all listed on the app now. So okay. if you download Viappy, which is on the app store, build for Android coming soon. Um, basically, wherever you are in the UK, you will find your nearest vegetarian and vegan restaurant. And that's class. What kind of inspired you to do that? Is that personally you've found it difficult sometimes? Or? Do you know what? When I first turned vegan, what I was fascinated with was the vegetarian and vegan restaurants because I, at the time, I kind of, you know, I was doing like daily radio. Mm -hmm. I'm back doing that again, but this time I'm on in the evenings. But back in the day, it was like lunchtime. So it would be very tricky for me to kind of get all my ducks in a row, get organised, cook and everything. And because I kind of went, pardon the expression, cold turkey into yeah. veganism, I really was just reliant on these restaurants and, you know, like getting like vegan desserts and all the rest of it. And yeah. so um, it was it was a good way for me to transition going to all these cool places around London at the time. And I just thought, you know what, I just want to, wouldn't it be great to create an easy way to, to find your nearest restaurant? And obviously you've got Happy Cow and all the rest of it, but I wanted to build something that was re looked really amazing. So it looks like Deliveroo when you're going mm -hmm. through it, it looks great. It's very hard sometimes to make food look good when you're taking a picture of it. Yeah. And I think it's important for people to see the best of great food. Do you so, get do you get many like restaurants and stuff contacting you saying that it's a good thing you're doing because loads. there's so many vegan mm -hmm. restaurants that go out of business so early. Yeah, a lot of them contact me and a lot of them are grateful for me kind of having like this really concentrated place of all these users that love either they're animal lovers or they're vegetarians or they're vegans or they're curious mm -hmm. about it or veggie curious. Yeah, um, there's so, a lot of words popping up now. I know. But it's, and even, you know, like for me, I just wanted to, because there's also recipes on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to create a, a place for people who, like me, were maybe like new vegans. Yep. Grown up, you know, meat and two veg, like that's how I've kind of been raised. I've, you know, I didn't even have like vegetarian parents and then I became vegan. So for me, it was important to see how I could transition. So it's like, if you want to go out for a meal, there's the restaurants. And if you want to make it at home, there's the recipes. So that was why. Yeah, no excuses. Do you like the right? app? I love it. And what I love about it as well is, you know what you said earlier about like you raise meat and two veg? Yeah. There's a lot of people that were raised like that. Like yeah. that's the majority, isn't it? Yeah. And so many people, when they were raised that way, when it comes to cooking a vegan meal, they go, so I've got the veg, what, what am I going to... They just think what I'm going to replace that bit with. Yeah, exactly. And they don't think about recipes and things like they that. Don't so. think about recipes, but I think since becoming vegan, I've been way more creative. Mm -hmm. I'm a really good cook now, I have to say. Smashing actually, it. Actually, the last time I saw you, did you make my lentil bolognese or was it the lentil curry? I meant the lentil curry, curry last the lentil time, curry. yeah. The lentil bolognese is probably my favourite thing. Okay. Anyone who knows me well has probably tried it and I've probably cooked it like 80,000 times. So I've perfected <laughs> it. But tell me about what you're cooking today. So what I'm going to make you today is um, I've put some gluten-free gnocchi in there. Nice. Um, I love gnocchi. Super simple. Um, it's going to be in my book, which, you oh, know. Okay, it's in the book. Um, it's going to be in the book. Yeah, I'm going to announce that. So when, when this is out, it'll already be announced. But um, it's going to be announced on the 26th of September. Okay. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's basically it's over 100 recipes that, same as, like, what you're doing. It's yeah. trying to make it easy for people, as yeah. easy as possible. I want no excuses from people that there's stuff in there they can't source like ingredients and things like that. So yes, it's all really thing, interesting. Because it? sometimes, you know, like I've collaborated with a couple of um, different chefs, mm -hmm. and then I was looking back at some of the recipes and I thought, right, I love these recipes, but what I want to do now, and actually that was another thing that I could say that I'm launching um, around sort of when it, wait, when are you airing this? Oh, this will be aired. Um, this will be aired like in October. So, okay, fine. Yeah. So like you know. Um, Final quarter of the year, um, I'm going to have some new recipes on Viappy called Basics. And basically, okay. I've had a load of recipes, and I want I want them to be, you know, students, people that don't have a lot of money, people that are maybe single and they're not cooking for a bunch of other people, and they don't have loads of kind of like fiddly ingredients. Yeah. And that some of them are just like in the same way that if you're I don't know like a bloke living on your own or, or whoever, a girl like just or a student or just somebody who's not w working with a big budget. You don't have to worry about expensive ingredients. You can just throw it together in a really easy way. And so the Aki Basics is going to be like a bunch of new recipes. Yeah. For those people as well. I That's think, I mean, being out, in, being out in LA recently, I realised yeah. how easy it is out there. You know, like there's so much out there. And London is the same. Yeah. There's so much. 
But I think we get in a little bubble of yeah, like thinking that, that yeah. you can get vegan cheese everywhere, you can get this everywhere or that everywhere. And, and really, it's great that you're working on making it simple for people because not everyone's got, you know, a planet organic down the road. No, or... the access outside of the main cities is, is tough. But you know what, I will say this. Your Asda's, your Sainsbury's, your Tesco's, they're all coming forward with the yeah. vegan cheeses now they never used to. I used to live in a little flat in Kent, it's the first property that I bought, really small little flat, and it's in an area where there's no bougie little organic places or anything like that. Yeah. And I used to have the right hand walking around like, where's Waitrose? There is no Waitrose. But now, even in that little area, the Aldi's, the this is that, it's like you can get, actually, you know what, don't quote me on the Aldi having vegan cheese, but I know that Asda up the road has. So it's yeah. like, it's different, you know, it's easier now. In whatever part of town that you live, it is so much easier now to go dairy free, to get your meat free alternatives. You don't have to be in all of those, like, whether it's planet organic or whole foods anymore. Yeah. It's better, isn't it? It's just getting easier all the getting time, there, which is there. nice. Um, so, what's Manchester Street and you like? Manchester, where I live now, I love. It's a really good city for veganism. Some amazing restaurants there. Um, one of my favourite places is V Reps, which is like okay. a diner. Not so been there yet. Oh my god, it's sick. Yeah. So it's like cheeseburgers, fries with like melted cheese and like bacon bits on, but obviously not real bacon, milkshakes. And if you look on my Instagram, you'll see a couple of times I've been there and kind of on a cheat day. Like yeah, you know, you got to be good to yourself. Yeah. you got to be good to yourself. And you say cheat day, like, is that something, are you focusing on that at the minute? Like you're no, working out quite a lot? Or no, I don't know nah. cheat days. I have, I have to think about having a, de- a good day. <laughs> no, no. Um, I just mean that obviously, you know, vegan, Veganism doesn't mean you're always having super healthy food. You can have junk yeah. food, which is good in a way because it means that people will see that it's easy to do and not, oh my God, you have to eat quinoa. It doesn't have to be like that. Well, I think that's something interesting in the, in the way the mainstream's adopting veganism at the yeah. minute because they're kind of like adopting it, but then you look at like Bake Off or something and they're going, oh, we're going to do a vegan week and it's going to be like a cow muffin or something. You're like, what? Like, yeah, that's yeah. not your generic, that's not what vegans are actually eating, like... No, no, no. We're eating sugary cakes and, like, <laughs> fake chicken and... No. But no, do you know what? I just think it's important to understand that there are options for everything. Yeah. And I'm not suggesting that every day you go out and have, like, unhealthy stuff just because it's not meat and dairy, you'll be all right. But I am saying that if you're worried about becoming vegan or giving up meat and dairy because you think that you're gonna have to forego all the stuff you love, then that's not true. Yeah. Even Ben and Jerry's have got vegan ice cream now. Exactly. Three Which... different flavours. Three? Yes. Oh man, I've not oh, even I seen all say. three, you know. We know. What's the one you had yesterday? Yesterday I had peanut butter and cookies. See, that's the one I've had. <laughs> that's the one I've had. I, I keep seeing these flavours that are popping up in America at the minute and thinking, I can't wait till that flavour comes over here. See, that's cause... the thing, LA is sick for veganism. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's such a good place. Did you have fun? Loved it, yeah, loved it. It was the people I met out there as well. Like, yeah. it's it's a very different scene, but I'm I'm gonna completely be honest. I don't think anywhere is more banging than vegan nights. <laughs> the vegan nights, obviously, are London. Yeah, yeah, is our London party party vegan scene. We need to start one together in Manchester and spearhead that. That's what we need to do. One hundred percent. That's that's exactly what it's about. Yeah. Like bringing a community together because yeah. even in Notting Hill, just down the road here, yeah, there's that, um, that Port Bell and Vegan Market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I only, so he's got that all going. Your, my friend, who's here with us in the studio, um, who lives down the road, was talking about that. But no, there's so much cool new stuff going on. Mm-hmm. And it's just a really exciting time, isn't it? Yeah. So what's what's the next step for you? Is the, uh, you know, a, a mogul at the minute of like bringing Viappi out and being on the radio and doing all your, all your different there things? Is like more, what's... actually. Um, so I'm doing a podcast. Okay. I've got a few episodes in the can. You should come on it, actually. 100%. Called The V Word. Um, okay. And I've got interviews with vegan footballers, um, heavyweight boxers. Nice. Yeah, so people that you wouldn't expect to be vegan, who are, um, you know, then I've got somebody else on there who is a lecturer, who is lecturing in America on speciesism, um, who is a sort of self proclaimed black gay vegan. So it's okay. like niches, <laughs> within, niches within niches, but, it, but it's cool because. That's what I wanted. I wanted to create something that was like um, basically showcasing people that are not like are breaking the. I mean, listen, there's every, you know, there's vegans in every walk of life. Oh, I tell you who else I've got on there as well. Okay. A vegan truck driver. Okay. I've seen him. So he's on Instagram, nah. and basically he's like a really cool guy called Paul. He's from Yorkshire, 
And he is what you, you know, you would, if you're going to stereotype someone and wonder what they're eating, you'd think that, you know, someone from Yorkshire who drives a truck, but lives in his truck four days a week, is not going to be vegan. Yeah, this you, guy, you're thinking bacon sandwiches constantly, aren't you? You're thinking, yeah. yeah. Thinking bacon sandwiches, poor diet, coke, like cancer. Yeah. Instead, he's got, a, he's got like a, a camper sort of cooking thing in his van. Mm -hmm. He makes like, like vegan curries from scratch. Like him and his wife are vegan. They're about to have a baby. The baby's going to be raised vegan. And he basically Instagrams pictures of his homemade food um, and puts it on the big like truck wheel so that it's like in the context of the vegan truck driver. And he's amazing. So he's another one that is like breaking the stereotype of like, you know, a footballer, a boxer, a truck driver, um, a lecturer who's talking about, you know, who's, who's actually built a syllabus around speciesism and all the rest of it. It's just, it's fascinating. So still got a few more episodes to record. So you should yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to appear on there. I think all your ethics gang, mate, you, Tim. Get the gang on. Get Tim's the gang on. like Jesus now, isn't he? He's looking at, no, he's looking. He's, uh... Tim is look, Tim Sheaf is looking so well, isn't he? he? His eyes have gone like grapes, like crystal colours. He's, um, <laughs> he's just very focused. Ascend. He's just very focused and he's, um, always looking for the next thing. Is always like looking at how he can optimise himself more. Yeah, but you can see it in him. I love that. I love it when people just, you know, like eat well or live well and they look different for it. Mm -hmm. That's the, and that's why food is medicine, isn't it? Yeah, he's channeling the guy is. Oh so, my God. This, that's just a gluten-free gnocchi with an arabiata sauce, so it's going to be nice and spicy. It's going to have a little kick to it. I thought you put a lot of spice in there. A lot of hot sauce in there. I basically cheated the system. It's a really, really easy hack. Instead of putting some fresh chilli in there, bang some hot sauce in there. Got some smoked paprika in there. And it's just passata, basil and garlic. Nice tasty dish, um, but like as you saw, super simple. So this is going to be available. You can do it while I talk. This is going to be in your recipe book. This won't be. This is just for you. Okay. Um, well, yeah, this is just. Then, yeah, let's let's do it. Every let's do it. Exclusive. Exactly. That's what I need to start doing. Put some more exclusive recipes on there. Yeah, um, but yeah, we need to talk more about that and, and collaborate more on it as well, mm -hmm. so we can get some more recipes flowing. Um, thank you very much for coming on today after your busy wanted. fashion fashion catwalk day. I know. Um, I Julian McDonald show. Good. Enjoy it. Love it. Yeah, it was wicked. It's vibes. Do you know what? I've had such a good day. I've been to a fashion show and then now I'm eating vegan food with you. This is like the perfect day. Winner. <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming on. We'll hang out around soon. 100%. 100%. Um, Boom. At Sarah Jane Crawford. At Sarah Jane Crawford and Viappi, V I A P P I, for downloading my app. Out now. Give it a download. Um, out now. Thank you very much for watching. Be nice to each other and goodbye. <laughs>